In terms of the format, is it a pre-roll, mid-roll, post-roll, just a, a host-read endorsement? What's, what's working? So for us, what's worked to date has been the in-show sponsorship message, where you've got the show going along, and you know, the, the, the host sort of takes a break, and, or comes out and says, you know, now I'm going to talk about this thing, and you know, these guys are a sponsor, I'm going to interact with it and talk about it. It's really clear that they're a sponsor and that they've gotten paid for it, but it is very much baked into the programming, so Kevin and Alex will uh, do an entertaining experience with the product. Or um, the case of GoDaddy, uh, our show Pixel Perfect, which is kind of paint by numbers with Photoshop, our host will do a, a read about GoDaddy that's, you know, it's, it's very obvious what he's doing, it's very endearing, and he's really, you can feel he's a little bit uncomfortable with it, but it really works. And um, so that's what we've been doing to date. Uh, but I believe that there are many, many other forms of advertising that we can put into these that and we don't even know what they are yet. Now, pre-roll, I think pre-roll sucks. Get rid of it. Nobody wants to, you know, hey, I want to watch your media. And somebody goes in and you finally got somebody to click on your media or download it and watch it. What's the first thing you do? You give them something they don't want. That's, yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, so everybody's looking for format. They're looking for TV's got the 30-second ad. Online, new media is going to have X. But are we ever going to see it? Do we need to get, because what the pro, part of the problem, I think, with that is that it, they're bored with the 30 seconds. So are we ever going to see a format? Do we need to have a format? I think we need a whole bunch of formats. And again, like I said, we're in the first inning of this. We don't know what it's going to end up being. So I'll give you some ideas, though, and stuff that we're working on. So uh, I think mid-roll works, and we've been doing mid-roll. And there's, uh, on the GigaOM show, we do a little bit of that. Although, you don't want to do mid-roll for like three minutes. Um, there is um, lower third or lower fifth pop-up that we're seeing a little bit of. And I'm really, I, I like that idea, although, you know, there's, you can get run into some issues with that. Um, there's the idea of putting a bug in that rotates. There's the idea of just a full push where you have an L clamp push and the sponsor message wraps around it. And then there's doing something broader at the end, whether it's a post roll or even a, maybe a two to three minute thing if the sponsor wants it, where you, you make it so that it is an interesting element that people want to stick around and watch. All those things, I don't know if any of them are going to be successful. What I know today is the in-show sponsorship stuff we do, the Ed Sullivan, Howard Stern model, is successful. And are the advertisers asking for anything specific, or are they leaving it up to you to decide how they pre they're presented? Some are. Some say, you know, we want you to run our 15 or our 30. Some are, you know, we show them our sponsorship model, and they like that. Um, but it's, it's the ones that are a little bit more adventurous, because um, when you do a sponsorship model, and you give us your product, and you have the hosts interact with it, you're basically giving your brand up. You're saying, okay, I'm power, I feel strongly enough about Southern Comfort that I can give it to Kevin and Alex and they can interact with this product and do something that works for my product. Have you ever had a host say, you know what, I hate that product, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna wanna do that? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, so you work around that. Um, uh, not really hate it, but that really don't understand it. Um, in that case, you, you do something different. Most of the shows, it seems, are longer format, sometimes 30, even 40 minutes, longer than that. Um, and yet, it seems like the most things that are viral are clips, two or three minutes. Why decide to go long format, and do you think people are watching the entire thing? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, every long form show is an element of smaller elements. Element of smaller elements. And I believe that the, the viewing of a show the experience of sitting back and being part of something with a friend of yours and going through that experience could be 20 minutes, it could be a half hour, it could be 45 minutes. And traditional television has shown us that people like experiences of that length. That's for something that you download or that you make available in that sort of big screen environment or when you're sitting on an airplane or on a bus. The short form videos that people are sending around virally are great for streaming and quick hits, little snack episodes. And what we've started doing, in the case of the Kevin Rose Cool Kit and some others, we've taken shorter things inside of our shows that are really, you know, we think they're viral and we think that people would like passing them around and spreading those everywhere. Again, leading people back to, I want to hook you with something viral and then I want to get you addicted so that you subscribe via iTunes or something else and then watch the show every week. With that said, we're experimenting with formats also. So I've got a new show that we did, uh, we did a pilot with Martin Sargent, a couple pilots called Web Drifter. And it's hilarious. It's Borat meets the internet. We send Martin out to these wackos running websites. He's, he's been in like Mississippi all week. Uh, and comes back, nothing wrong with Mississippi, but just there are wackos all over the country. Um, got about 20 episodes done, and it's short. It's about eight minutes to 10 minutes. Hilarious, highly produced, and something that you could sit and watch in a streamed format as well as download. 
Do you have a budget for each individual show? Do you expect, do you have to say, we're not going to spend any more per episode than this? Yeah, it, it, pretty much. I mean, we, we, we're just working out what those budgets are and where they are. Um, we, it's, for the in-house shows, what we've done, and, and most of our shows now are in-house, uh, over time we'll, continue, we'll, we'll add additional shows into our portfolio. But we're in the process of building a, uh, a full-on HD studio in San Francisco where we can do these shows quickly and get them up and do them live. And because when, you, when you're dealing with not television professionals, live really works well. Because if you take Ohm Malik, perfect example. If I tell Ohm he can have 20 takes, he's going to take 20 takes. Uh, so, oh, I screwed up. i got to do it again. But if it's live and you've got to do it live, there's a little bit of sort of, kind of clinches you. It makes your performance a little bit better. And it also is a lot cheaper. So we're moving to this model. We're not there yet because our studio is not done, where we do all of our, most of our in-house shows. They're live. They're, they're, they're done directly. They're out there quickly. And to me, that's important because the frequency is also important. And new media has kind of gotten a pass so far because the production values, as long as, is the, is the host is liked and, and the show has got a decent audience, they're, the audience is willing to forgive the, the lower production value. Now, the, yours, are, yours are fantastic, but do you think you have... Uh, do we get a pass to have a lower production value, or are we going to have to compete with TV, and it's got to be as, look as good as CSI? The, uh, we are uh, in the beginnings of a flight to quality, and it's got to be good. And it starts with, uh, it starts with audio. Um, interestingly enough, and most of you who do uh, audio podcasts know that, but if the audio, audio isn't good, first of all, people are not going to stick around. And when I got to Revision 3, you know, some of our shows were of some uneven quality. And part of it, I would listen to these and like, that audio is terrible. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we don't. I'm like, well, make it better. And so it starts with audio. And then it starts with good video. Uh, and all of ours, because we're, we're, we're able to do ours in a studio environment, we can have multi-camera shoots. So it's not one camera all the time, which is OK for some stuff. But having a little bit of visual uh, excitement to it adds something without taking away that real and authenticness, authenticity of it. Uh, the other thing I think in addition to a flight to quality is a flight to HD. And so we're big believers in HD. Uh, a couple of our shows are in HD formats now, and I believe over time people will want that because they're going to get it at home, they're going to get it with the television they receive via cable, satellite, and, uh, and even over the air, and they're going to want it in these video programs too. How many shows are you comfortable, I mean, comfortable getting? I mean, is there a goal for how many you want to have? Is it unlimited? What are your thoughts there? You know, it's as many as we feel we can comfortably manage and drive forward. I'm less concerned about the number of shows as I am about the size of the audience. So I want shows that are delivering, you know, half a million views or more a month. And, and how long will you give them to do that before you say, we're, we're done with this uh, one? A couple days. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, depends on the show. If I see the trend, then I'll keep uh, investing in it. But uh, if it's just sort of bouncing around at that under 100,000 level for a couple months, then I'm like, well, you know, it's just, gonna, it's just 